So NVIDIA dropped some pretty exciting news on us the other day, revealing the first three SKUs of their RTX 3000 series GPUs on the new Ampere architecture, including the RTX 3090, that's the flagship at $1,499, the RTX 3080, which is allegedly faster than two RTX 2080s that'll retail for $699, and the RTX 3070 priced at $499 and is allegedly faster than an RTX 2080 Ti. These are some insane claims that understandably have gotten a lot of people, including myself, Pretty excited about this launch. Now, of course, there's always something to be said about taking manufacturers' uh, claims with a grain of salt until reviews come out, third-party unbiased reviews that can verify and validate these claims. But even if the RTX 3070 is in the ballpark in terms of performance with an RTX 2080 Ti, the fact that it's selling for a fraction of the price is still just insane. So what I wanted to do today is actually build a system, well not build a system, part out a system, pick all the parts for a gaming PC using the RTX 3070 for a thousand dollars. We'll try to get it under a thousand, but I'm just gonna say ballpark a thousand bucks. And the reason why I'm choosing the 3070 as the focus for today is because I did a Twitter poll right after the live event from Nvidia ended, and I asked you guys out of the three cards, which one would you consider buying the most? And not too surprisingly, most of you guys voted for the RTX 3070 because it is the cheapest card, and if it can perform on par with the 2080 Ti, that's an insane amount of value that's giving you a lot of GPU for the money. The 3070 isn't slated to release until October, which is about a month away from now, but I think even if you were to reference this parts list a month later as a, as a sort of guide, that the prices of the other components shouldn't fluctuate that much from today until then, because uh, a month just isn't a tremendous amount of time for that to happen. Of course, everything's a, a bit subject to change, but I don't think it's gonna be super drastic or anything. On that note, I'm just gonna start picking out parts on PC Part Picker here. I already kind of have a pretty good idea of what core components I wanna use, but there's gonna be, there, there are some other parts that I really just need to do some price checking in order to figure out uh, how we're gonna make this work for $1,000 without cutting too many corners that would you know, be detrimental to the usability or the functionality of the system. So let's start with the CPU, very top of the list. Uh, I think PC Part Picker is already sort of predicting what I'm thinking. It's in my head right now because I, was, uh, I had my eye on the Ryzen 5 3600. It looks like it went up in price slightly. I, I remember it being maybe 180, 185 on Amazon. Let's see, is this, is this an Amazon price that we're getting? Yeah, it is an Amazon price. Let's just take a look really quick here. In stock, October 24th. Wow, they're, they're sold out on Amazon. Let's see if it's available on Newegg and for what price. Okay, 199, so it's about the same price. A couple bucks more, not a huge difference. And it looks like it's in stock. Yeah, it's in stock, so okay, thank God. I thought there might've been some Zen 2 shortage that I didn't know about. So you can buy that, uh, you know, availability is important. You wanna make sure that the parts that we're choosing are, uh, are in supply. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. I think that this is just a, a good sweet spot CPU for this build. It's six cores, 12 threads. I'm going with the AM4 platform with AMD because I still think it has more benefits than what Intel's offering right now on their mainstream uh, platform. The first one obviously being full PCIe Gen 4 support that's available now, not with the release of some future generation CPU. This obviously makes sense because all the RTX 3000 series GPUs are supporting PCIe Gen 4, so we wanna be able to match up that protocol and have full support for this new graphics card on the platform that we choose. And of course, there's several other advantages to the AM4 platform right now that we've talked about at length on the channel, so I'm not gonna get too much into that. Uh, also, the Ryzen 5 3600 does include a stock cooler. I believe it's a Wraith Stealth, not a Spire. Yeah, it's definitely a Stealth, and uh, obviously it's, it's adequate to cool the 3600 if you're not doing any crazy overclocking with it. Um, otherwise, AMD wouldn't have included it in the box. It's rated for the 65 watt TDP chip that it comes with, so you shouldn't have a problem there. And it's a great way to save some dollars because our RTX 3070 is already eating up literally half of our budget of $1,000. So we really have to sort of be frugal here when we can. Um, so I'm not gonna choose the CPU cooler since it's included with the CPU. For our motherboard, after everything I just talked about, we obviously wanna go with a platform that supports PCI Gen 4 for our graphics card. Uh, and also it uh, opens up the doors to very fast NVMe storage. So we're gonna go with B550 because that's the more cost-effective uh, of the two between that and X570, which are the only two AMD platforms that support PCI Gen 4 at the moment. So we're gonna narrow down our search to AM4. Let's do micro ATX and ATX uh, boards. The mini ATX ones are usually not very available and can be kind of pricey. B550, and we're gonna sort by lowest price. All right, so the absolute cheapest B550 board we can go with is an ASRock. B550M HDV. Let's just see what this looks like. Let's just entertain ourselves for a minute. So very basic board, only has two DIMM slots, which for me, I'm, I'm already out. 
if it's if it's not a mini ITX board, I really don't I really don't bother with uh, with boards like that. So the next one up is a B550M DS3H from Gigabyte, and this looks a little bit better. It does have four DIMM slots. It's ninety five dollars, and it has really good reviews. Four out of five stars or eggs, um, and it looks like it's also got you know a bit of a a little heat sink on the VRM assembly there. It's also got two M.2 slots. That's actually kind of surprising. Uh, let's see what the rear IO looks like. Fingers crossed. Oh, okay, not too bad. Um, you do have video outs. If you ever did drop a, a CPU with a integrated graphics on it, you could leverage that. Um, there's two, four USB 3.0 ports, very basic audio IO as you'd expect, but overall not too terrible. So let's see what the next step up is beyond that. Uh, MSI, okay, now we're getting a little bit more pricey. This is $15 more for the B550M Pro VDH. And this board, so micro ATX, this board looks pretty good too. It kind of looks very similar actually to the one we just looked at from Gigabyte, but it's 15 or 10 to $15 more. Uh, it does have Wi-Fi. So depending on if that's important to you, you know, we're sort of splitting hairs here. It's gonna sort of boil down to the end user, what their needs are. Uh, a lot of people who are gaming are just plugging in directly. So, you know what, just to save some bucks and because it looks like a pretty decent board with really good reviews, I'm gonna go with the B550M DS3H for 94 bucks. For memory now, uh, we want 16 gigs. This is pretty straightforward, I think. Um, I'm gonna leave all the manufacturer options open. Keep an open mind there. We're gonna want DDR4, of course, two by eight gig sticks, and let's just sort by lowest again. Okay, so we, we could go dirt cheap and get uh, a Guile Evo Potenza, such a weird name, um, for $50, but it's DDR4 3000. I'd like to get 3200 speed if possible. I feel like that's sort of the sweet spot where you wanna be for Ryzen 3000. So I'm just gonna look at this column right here until we find 3200 right here. This is the lowest priced 3200 16 gig kit. It's also from Guile, Evo Spear Phantom Gaming. At least it has less of a weird name and it's cast latency 16. So not the greatest cast latency, but the price is right. And it looks like, okay. It doesn't have like the super hideous heat sinks that a lot of Guile sticks have. I thought it was gonna be this one, <laughs> the Potenza, which ugh, I, I know we're not going for aesthetics whatsoever here, but it's still a hard pill to swallow putting something like that in, in one of my builds, uh, if I'm speaking honestly. So I think I'm gonna go with this one. I'm just gonna buy it or not buy it. I'm gonna add it to our list. I don't know why I feel so like stressed that we're not gonna make it under a thousand dollars, but I believe, I believe, I have faith, we can do it. Not worried at all. For storage, let's check out our SSD options here. We wanna boot off of an SSD. For a thousand dollars, absolutely. Even for like a $500 build these days, I feel like you should just always boot off an SSD. You know what? I'm gonna do like 500. We'll, we'll see what 500 gig SSDs are going for right now on the cheap. So lowest we've got is 44.99, 45 bucks for, uh, what is this? Team, is this, oh yeah, team group. Team group, um, and these are, these are gonna be like the DRAM, like the DRAM SSDs that, uh, that use DRAM on, on board, um, which are not quite as high quality, but the DRAM technology in SSDs has come a long way. They used to be just garbage, really awful. I would never recommend them. But the budget SSD space has gotten so competitive that manufacturers have really been working on uh, making the DRAM perform better and, and uh, have more write endurance than they used to. So we'll be sure to keep an eye on user reviews and that sort of thing. Uh, Silicon Power, I really do like their A55 series. Um, 512 gigs, for one, I like that they do 512 and not 480. It just gives you that extra bit of capacity. It's a 2.5 inch drive, of course, SATA Rev 3, six gigabit per second. We're not gonna get any fancy NVMe drives in here for the budget that we're trying to target, um, considering that we have a really high-end GPU going in here. 46.99, that's a really good price. It's only a couple bucks more than the GX2, uh, which is also 512 gigs, but I have more personal experience using silicon power drives, um, these exact SSDs actually, and they've, they've always been great. Crucial BX500, that's probably one of the more popular kind of budget entry level SSDs if you're looking at two and a half inch drives, but it's 480 gigs. It's also using a DRAM chip, I think, but it's a little bit more expensive as well, so I don't really see the value in going with that option. Uh, and it just gets more expensive from there. So silicon power it is. And the thing is here, we're only getting 500 gigs. If you wanted to get a terabyte in here, you'd probably you know, roughly double that price. So you, you're looking at maybe $85, 85 to $90 on a one terabyte SSD. 
And I think this is one of the corners that we're gonna have to cut here, is we're gonna have to start this build off with just a single 500 gig drive. But that's still gonna allow you to install a handful of games on it. You know, your mileage may vary. I mean, Call of Duty Warzone's over 100 gigs now. Um, but you should still be able to play some games, you know, have a decent sized library on there to start with. And then down the line, if you save up 40, 50 bucks, pop in a one or two terabyte hard drive and you're good to go. Uh, let's move on to, well, I guess we can just manually create our RTX 3070 part right now. Fun. Okay, we're gonna go, it's a video card and uh, it's gonna be $4.99. And this is, you know, of course, we'll, we'll see how things shake out in October. If you can actually get them for $4.99, if you'll be able to get them for cheaper than that, uh, we'll see what uh, the board partners have on, in store for us as well. With new GPU family releases, I generally have more confidence that the lower end or mid range cards are gonna be able to uh, be purchased for around the MSRP more closely than the higher end cards because usually the yields of those uh, aren't quite as high. So there's really low supply, very high demand, and that can really jack up the prices. But we should be able to see a pretty good availability of these uh, 3070 cards once they launch. Just speculation, of course, but that's the way that I've seen it in the past. Now we are at, oh, we're getting close. We're at $890 there. Uh, we have to really be conscious of how we're parting this out from here on out. So for a case, we have a micro ATX motherboard, which is a good thing because generally micro ATX cases you can find pretty cheap. I'm gonna select micro, micro, micro. Let's just do all the micros. And I think there's a motherboard. Yeah, micro ATX there. Okay, those are the only criteria that I'm putting in. So we could just go with like the crappiest case ever, the DIY PC chassis that are just super, super cheap, but you get what you pay for. And if we're sticking a card that's about as fast as an RTX 2080 Ti in here, uh, it just doesn't feel right. We can still get a decent quality case for not too much money. Uh, we have a lot of options here. I wanna go with one that has like a mesh front panel if possible. Like uh, there is the Thermal Take Versa, the Versa H18. I've used this case before and the thermals are actually pretty impressive considering that this is just a really, really economical case. Cause it's just all mesh at the front. I think it only includes one fan though. Yeah, it looks like there's only one fan and it's at the rear. So yeah, it's a bummer. Um, I want more fans in the system if possible, at least two, because I really want to give as much fresh airflow to the RTX 3070 as possible. So if we go a little bit further down here, is that a mesh front panel, Silverstone? What is this? The PS15? Let's check you out. Looks nice, like I just like how simple it is. Okay, very, very budget as you can see on the interior. Uh, what is that? Is this just one fan as well? I think we only got one fan pre-installed. One silent 120 millimeter exhaust fan included. That's all you get, so that's a no-go. Come on, we've gotta, we've gotta find something that's, that ticks all the boxes. Is this, is this mesh? This Cooler Master Box MB 311 thing. Oh my gosh, it might be. Is that mesh? That is definitely mesh, yo. Did it say it elsewhere in the, yeah, my, it was right here. Dear Kyle, read the, read the words, Kyle. $50 or $60, that's still really good. Okay, it's got two fans, two 120, I mean, RGB, cool. If you like RGB, sure, if you don't, just turn it off, but it's got two fans at the front. Let's see what the inside looks like. Okay, you get a PSU shroud. Looks like, you know, typical run of the mill cable management. The cutouts are nice and smooth at least. Looks like they like rounded the edges. You're not gonna cut your fingers. And the inside actually doesn't look too bad for, for this price. 60 bucks, I'm doing it. We don't have a lot of wiggle room left. So I think this is a pretty good option. Locking it in. All right, we have, we have $50 left for a power supply. Can we do it? This is, this is gonna be the, uh, this is the wild card sort of because power supplies have been really hard to find, they've been pretty scarce, and the ones that are available, the rates have been pretty jacked up because low supply again. So let's see what's available. I'm gonna do, oh, you know what? What we should do is check out the uh, minimum PSU for RTX 3070. I believe it's 650. Okay, yeah, this is from GameSpot. I'm assuming that GameSpot has their information correct. So RTX 3070 is 650 watts recommended. 
Now, that's not to say that you couldn't get away with a lower wattage PSU for this card. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people were recommending 650 watt units for the RTX 2080 Ti, and I've been able to run one on a 550 watt PSU that's you know 80 plus gold uh, or 80 plus even bronze um, without issue. Of course, I wasn't going crazy with overclocks or anything, but you get the idea. That being said, until we actually get the data and we get the numbers, we get the reviews to find out how much power this thing's gonna draw from the wall, I'm gonna play it safe. And I'm gonna go by the book here and try to get at least a 650 watt, 80 plus rated unit. Let's just do 650, oh, 635, whatever. Oh, also I'm gonna check 80 plus bronze, why not? Yeah, give me that $50, 80 plus titanium PSU. And okay, thermal tank, sure. Okay, for $65, so we're at this point we're definitely going to go over a thousand dollars not by much not by a lot but it looks like we're not going to make it under unless we do some extreme corner cutting with the other components but i feel like i'm, I'm about as low as i want to go right now i feel i feel good about the current build uh, i don't want to skimp it anymore so let's see hey, these are all 80 plus bronze there is an 80 plus gold a pevia prestige this is an 800 watt unit okay let's just try to stay in the 60s what do we got in the 60s anything anything nothing Okay, I wonder if I unchecked some of these, if more options pop up. A EVGA, is this not 80 plus? Is this 750 watt for 65 buckaroos? This has to be 80 plus. This is not 80 plus. Oh, this is like their 80 plus white, I think. That's the W, right? Okay, no wonder it's so cheap. Okay, never mind. maybe not that one. Corsair CV, all right, this could work. 650 watts for under 70 bucks. It's got ketchup and mustard cables. No, no, are any of these? So there's the EVGA one that has all black flat cables, but it's not 80 plus. Thermal take looks like it might have all black cables and it's 80 plus. Is this it? Why don't you just show me the connectors? What are you trying to hide? Let's see it. Let's see, did anyone post a picture of it? No, of course they didn't. It's a power supply. Okay, well, if this is all, oh, here we go. Okay, confirmed, black cables, right? That means they're black, right? If not, it's false advertising. So this is one potential option. Again, if we're trying to get as close to $1,000 as possible. If you're okay with spending 40, 50, $60 more than that, then consider getting a better power supply than this one. Not that this is bad or anything, but this is definitely in the budget realm. And with a RTX 3070, it would be nice to uh, get something with a little bit more Mm. Something that instills a bit more confidence, you know? If it were me, I would forgo the thermal take unit and probably get a Silverstone power supply. Silverstone makes really good power supplies. 80 plus bronze, this is their essential. So again, it's a budget unit, but it's from a really reputable PSU maker and black flat cables. Yay! So yeah, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is what I want. So this is actually more than we need technically. It's 750 watts, but I don't see any other Silverstone units that are less than that for cheaper. So we're gonna go with this, locking it in, $75. That brings our total to 1,025 bucks. That's, that's still around $1,000, I would say. I think, I think we've met our quota just fine in terms of budget. And look at this system. Let's just take a, a quick look here. You've got a six core 12-thread Ryzen processor on the latest AM4 platform, B550, with PCIe Gen 4 support for our fancy pants RTX 3070. We've got 16 gigs of DDR4 at 3200 speed, a 500 gig SSD to boot off of and add some games to, a very nice looking Cooler Master chassis, mid-tower micro ATX case with two included addressable RGB fans and a full mesh front panel for healthy intake and a 750 watt 80 plus rated Silverstone power supply. For a thousand bucks, I think this is a very viable parts list. Well, let's bear in mind that this entire system costs less than a single RTX 2080 Ti and it's including a GPU that's allegedly faster than an RTX 2080 Ti. It's just crazy. So you guys let me know what you think. Let me know if you'd like to see me do another parts list with an RTX 3080 or 3090 or whatever. Whatever you guys want to see, let me know. I'll be reading your comments. And uh, thank you for watching. Toss a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed for more tech content on the way. And I will see you guys in the next video.